good. First of all, you guys, welcome to Chicago. Are you guys glad they're here? Woo! I'm so excited to talk about The Boys because it is, first of all, it's an amazing show. Second of all, it takes this whole pop culture ser superhero genre and it just completely flips it upside down, which is something I love about this series. What do you guys think resonates about The Boys to everyone in this room and more? Mm. That's a great well. question. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I think that there's something in the boys for everybody, and I think it presents a great kind of twisted narrative on the superhero genre. You're all used to the Marvel films, and, and it's nice to see something that's uh, dark and twisted and, uh, uh, and, and different. And I think the success of films like Deadpool um, has, uh, has proven that there is an audience for uh, R-rated uh, comic book material. Absolutely. There's a, like, there's, we're, we're so saturated in comic books and, and, and uh, you know, DC universe. Everything's a universe now. And I think it's nice and just, you know, to have the option that comes out with something a little more subversive and um, a little more fuck you. I, and that's exactly what it is, you know. Laz, your character though, you're, you're a whole, you're a, you know, a family man, you're a home guy. And you, it's really interesting because you have to find that dynamic between being that family man and yet going on these missions and, and being a part of the boys. So how did you sort of create that within Mother's Mouth? So it, it's very easy because I'm really the nice guy when I'm hanging around these guys. Like, they're really bad people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. Carl's been a horrible influence on me in my personal life. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Carl's a horrible influence on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, you know. I, I just want to say, and what he means horrible influence, he means ending up in a club being taught karate with Jack Quaid by a woman wearing red lingerie at 3 in the morning. Oh my god! <laughs> True story. Got the photo. What's he talking about? We'll I can share. attest to that. I was there. What? I was there. I can attest to that. This was part of the cast That's bond. That's true. Right? <laughs> I was there. See? Didn't you see what I mean? <laughs> and they made us wear boas. We had boas. I had a purple boa oh on. That's right. So, <laughs> this really happened. Anyway, um, back to the question. Uh, you know, for me, it, it's... It's, I'm, I'm OCD in real life, so it actually feels good to be able to go on set and clean up after all these guys and straighten <laughs> things out. It's to the point where I straighten things out for the, 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 the people on set who are supposed to be doing it for us. I straighten it out for them. You know, like, I, I, I correct them. <laughs> this is no joke, because we're, we're next to each other signing autographs. Laz is there organizing his photos into neater piles. I noticed that today. I, so a, then you, you saw that? I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> so then they started maybe writing a little more of that caretaking. They do write more of that. He's the mother of the group. He's the dad, the, 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 the bad father. You know, I'm the caretaking mother. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just, uh, they're my kids, and I love them. I love that. Well, let's talk about Billy Butcher. I mean, you mentioned the MCU. You dabbled in there a little bit with Thor Ragnarok. And now... <laughs> This is a totally, as we were saying, different take. Uh, uh, what drew you to play the seemingly dark Billy Butcher? Uh, well, it was two things, really. Um, I read the, the pilot script. Um, I thought it was, it was fun and dark, twisted, and, and I really was drawn to the character of Billy. Uh, there's a sort of Machiavellian um, uh, uh, character who, um, you know, manipulates Huey uh, into doing what he wants, and um, that appealed to me. Uh, <laughs> this is so far away from what I'm like. Really. On and off. Nice guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> nice, nice guy. <laughs> um, and, and secondly, it was, a, it was really kind of meeting Eric Kripke and Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg and talking to those guys about what it was they were going to do and what they weren't going to do. And, and I decided that uh, it was a leap of faith that I was going to take, that I, I was really intrigued by it. I didn't think that I had seen anything quite like it. And I think that's, you know, one of the things that we all kind of look for and, uh, when we're trying to find something to do is, is some sort of uh, semblance of uh, originality. And, and this definitely had it. Oh man, I love the 
Shy. I love this city so much. I mean, if this is any indication to you what a great, great show Umbrella Academy is, I don't know what it is. Do you guys love the show? <laughs> yes! <laughs> It is, it is honestly just an incredible season of TV. And first of all, I'm just curious, were either of you guys familiar with the source material when you were initially up for the roles or when you were cast? Uh, uh, no, I wasn't. I got a call from my agent who's side stage. She'll thank me for saying this. <laughs> but she goes, uh, yeah, you know, Rob, it's this comic book. It was written by the Chemical Brothers. <laughs> I was like, oh, really? So yeah, that was about how familiar we were with the source material before, <laughs> yeah. before being given Same. the script. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I read the script for the first episode um, and then there was, and, and then I sent in my audition and then there was kind of like a couple months that went by. And then when I found out that I had a callback, then I was like, I should probably read these graphic novels, probably. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, figure out a little bit more about this crazy family. <laughs> well, the interesting thing about Allison is, even though obviously it's a it's a superhero show and all this stuff, you're you're reluctant to use your powers for most of season one, and so it's almost like you're in a family drama. Like, oh yes, you know. Yes. I, mean, I, I also will say that that is what drew me to the show initially. Uh -huh. Is that it is more about these. This, these individuals and this family on a very human level and um, just how they agree and disagree and agree to disagree um, and fight and how they kind of all exist in this house with the past that they have and also with the powers that they have and how they kind of go through life using them and not using them and um, I was definitely drawn to the drama side of it more than I was drawn to the superhero side of it for sure. Right well it get, it's a catalyst for which like a very human story can be told in a way. Um, you guys had to create that dynamic of siblings that grew up together but then hadn't seen each other in a long time and then reconverge. How did, how did you as actors sort of facilitate that relationship? It was pretty quick. Yeah, you know. We, there was one night of wild karaoke, and that was pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got the director yeah. of the first episode very drunk <laughs> in a karaoke and, place yeah, in Toronto. That was really it. It was like we all showed up in Toronto. We had like a meet and greet. We read the first episode, and then we we're all like, let's go to the bar. And then we ended up at a karaoke joint till five in the morning, and uh, we're like, I think this is gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> bond the way. All of us except for poor Aiden, because you know. Yeah, the way dysfunctional families <laughs> bond, which is get drunk together, essentially. Well, uh, well, I didn't read the script. He was telling me what uh, his script uh, has me doing. And he said, he said, he was thinking of putting uh, a samurai sword in my hand and I would terrorize uh, the Enterprise, the crew of the Enterprise, by assaulting them with my samurai sword. And I, I told him, well, that's interesting because uh, I'm of Japanese ancestry and uh, that is the traditional uh, sword of uh, ancient Japan. But I said, when I was a kid, I never played uh, Samurai. And I told him, I, I, uh, my parents took, took me to see uh, Earl Flynn in The Adventures of Robin Hood. And I was swept away by that. And uh, I, I came back and I had my mother make me a, a, a Robin Hood uniform. And my uh, backyard became Sherwood Forest. And I had my mother make uh, uh, Maid Marion's costume and uh, uh, Friar Tuck's uh, uh, costume, and my uh, I had my own little uh, production company uh, to do uh, uh, the Adventures of Robin Hood, and I, so I told him, "Why don't we put a fencing foil in Sue's hands? That might be uh, interesting science fiction, and uh, it would Sue would see his heritage and not just narrowly uh, racial." Well, the urban and cultural, but broader, uh, the uh, heritage of world uh, history. And he said, great, do you uh, know how to fence uh, today? And I said, I told him it's my favorite hobby. <laughs> I lied. <laughs>